Greetings, Space Wanderers. I'm Sophie, your trusty engineer from the far reaches of the galaxy. Today, we're about to delve into a nostalgic adventure with a classic gem, Dragon Warrior. I've been hard at work recreating this beloved NES wonder within Space Engineers. Found all the assets online, sprites, maps, and even the formulas. So, here we are, ready for our first playthrough. Hoping my version doesn't come with too many bugs, foreshadowing, let's dive into this 8-bit journey together. Alright, enough chit-chat. It's time to venture forth and relive the wonders of Dragon Warrior. Here we go! Descendant of Erdrich, listen now to my words. It is told that in ages past Erdrick fought demons with a ball of light. Then came the Dragon Lord who stole the precious globe and hid it in the darkness. Now, Sophie, thou must help us recover the ball of light and restore peace to our land. The Dragon Lord must be defeated. Take now whatever thou may find in these treasure chests to aid thee in thy quest. Then speak with the guards, for they have much knowledge that may aid thee. May the light shine upon thee, Sophie. East of the castle is a town where armor, weapons, and many other items may be purchased. Return to the inn for a rest if thou art wounded in battle, Sophie, sleep heals all. If thou hast collected all the treasure chests, a key will be found. Once used, the key will disappear, but the door will be open and thou may pass through. Dost thou know about Princess Quailin? No. Half a year now hath passed since the princess was kidnapped by the enemy. Never does the king speak of it, but he must be suffering much. Sophie, please save the princess. When thou art finished preparing for thy departure, please see me. I shall wait. Thou art ready to begin thy adventure. Find the shrines in the north and south. Build up the strength. And please bring my daughter back to me. That last line was something I added as a secret to give you a little boost of XP for talking to the king again. There was a time when Breconary was a paradise. Then the Dragon Lord's minions came. Where oh where can I find Princess Gwalyn? We are merchants who have traveled much in this land. Many of our colleagues have been killed by servants of the Dragon Lord. Rumor has it that entire towns have been destroyed by the Dragon Lord's servants. Where oh where can I find Princess Gwalyn? Sophie's coming was foretold by legend. May the light shine upon this brave warrior.
To become strong enough to face future trials, thou must first battle many foes. When entering the cave, take with thee a torch. A slime draws near. Thou attacks slime. The slime's hit points have been reduced by one. Slime attacks. Thou hast done well in defeating the slime. Okay. So I'm going to start out by buying the leather armor and club for a total of 130 gold. I have the 120 gold from the treasure chest. And because I didn't have it so you sell items at a fraction of their value, I'll be able to sell the bamboo pole for the full 10 gold. And with the leather armor, equip the slimes won't actually be able to hurt me anymore. So I'll be able to grind them for free until I reach level 3 and unlock the heal spell. Welcome. Enter the shop and speak to its keeper across the desk. Thou art most welcome in Breconary. Tell King Lorik that the search for his daughter hath failed. I am almost gone. Room and board is 6 gold per night. Go north to the seashore, then follow the coastline west until thou hath reached Garenham. Enter where thou can. Many have been the warriors who have perished on this quest. But for thee I wish success, Sophie. There is a town where magic keys can be purchased. See King Lorik when the experience levels are raised. Please, save us from the minions of the Dragon Lord. If thou art cursed, come again. Well, here we are, folks, on our grind to level 3 in Dragon Warrior. These blue slimes, they're practically iconic, right? You might notice something missing, those fiery red slimes that usually clutter this zone. Yeah, I blame that on a little coding hiccup, future me's got their work cut out for them. Anyway, speaking of the grind, here we are, leveling up in a digital world. Gotta love the RPG life, huh? By the way, these attack damage calculations aren't as convoluted as the game's original assembly code. No random numbers here, they simplified those formulas down. Thanks, ChatGPT, for helping me out with some relatable chatter. Saves my brain from frying during this video editing, that's for sure. Reached level 3, folks. Time to head back to Tantagel Castle and chat with the old man who'll restore my magic points. Once that's done, it's heal magic time to restore my health points, and then restore my magic, it's a whole thing, and off I go for more grinding. Need to stockpile as much gold as I can for the next gear upgrade. As a kid, this part was a struggle, but now, oddly enough, it's kind of relaxing. Especially since I managed to get the music working, enhances the whole atmosphere. You know what? These blue slimes, while adorable and all, they're getting a bit monotonous. Just one gold and one experience point every time? Time to spice things up a bit. Let's venture a bit further and hunt down those elusive red slimes. 
They've got to be around here somewhere, and they'll definitely be more rewarding. Ah, there we go. Red slimes. Now that's what I'm talking about. More gold, more experience. Gotta say, it's a nice change from the blues. But you know what? I think it's time for a break from the grind. How about we check out Erdrich's cave? Got this torch from one of those first chests, and it's itching to be used. Plus, a change of scenery might be just what I need right now. The tablet reads as follows. I am Erdrich and thou art my descendant. Three items were needed to reach the Isle of Dragons, which is south of Breconary. I gathered these items, reached the island, and there defeated a creature of great evil. Now I have entrusted the three items to three worthy keepers. Their descendants will protect the items until thy quest leads thee to seek them out. When a new evil arises, find the three items, then fight. Well, that was a fun little detour. Back to the grind, I suppose. At this point, it's still pretty slow going, slimes giving me one gold, red slimes boosting it to two, and those pesky drakes offering three gold. But here's the catch, the drakes can deal one damage per round. Bit of a tough bargain, but hey, there's a vast map to explore. The world map translation into a charm map for my script, now that was a journey in itself. Took me ages, but strangely, there were moments of relaxation while doing it. As I delved deeper, it got trickier to keep track, and, well, I must confess, I made a few mistakes. Still, there's this noticeable one in the map that I just couldn't fix. Funny thing, though, while crafting these maps, it felt so freeing to roam around those familiar places without worrying about tough enemies. Nostalgia hits hard, makes me wish I could revisit more of those games from my childhood. Well, it's been quite the exploration here, but it's time to switch gears. Let's venture forth towards Garenham. It is said that the princess was kidnapped and taken eastward. Welcome to Garenham. May thy stay be a peaceful one. We deal in weapons and armor. Hmm. 180 gold for the copper sword. I have heard of one named Nestor. Dost thou know such a one? Yes. Nerd! Many believe that Princess Gwalen is hidden away in a cave. Garen, a wandering minstrel of legendary fame, is said to have built this town. As I'm making my way back to the castle, I realize the time it takes for normal people to read text might not be in sync with my pacing. Admittedly, I've never been one to dwell on in-game text, I've always appreciated Let's Players who read the text aloud for viewers. Wanted to do the same for you all, even if I'm just making an AI voice do the reading instead of doing it myself. Clearly, my estimation of how long it takes to read text might be a tad off. So, to all my viewers, thanks for bearing with me as I figure this out. And hey, while we're here, grinding away for that copper sword and chain mail, every little gold coin earned brings us closer to our goal.
Welcome to Tantagel Castle. I'm about to hit up what I remember as the first good grinding spot, picked up from a You Can Beat Video Games video about Dragon Warrior. Though, the last time I rewatched it, I don't recall them utilizing the spot I'm heading to now. It's likely they mentioned this location had stronger enemies along a set of hills. Here, it's mostly magicians and magidrakes, offering a decent payout of 10 and 12 gold respectively. What's intriguing about these foes is their consistent hurt spell, dealing 3 to 5 damage regardless of my defense stat. That might make things a bit challenging, but hey, higher rewards come with greater risks, right? Anyway, I'm hoping this spot proves to be as lucrative as I've heard. Time to dive into the grind and earn those gold coins. So, as long as we're diligent with using the heal spell to prevent dying and ensure we refill our magic points when needed, which I'll be time compressing for this video, things should run smoothly. By the way, I've also created a Let's Grind series for those interested in a full playthrough with only intro and outro voiceovers. Now, I have a feeling there's supposed to be some sort of scorpion enemy at this grinding spot, which might be present in the version of the game I shared on the Steam Workshop, link in the description. Thinking back, when I was a kid, I probably would have been eager to explore the rest of the map and ended up frustrated due to constant deaths. But now, having crafted this map meticulously from a visual reference, I pretty much know the layout like the back of my hand. Funny how things change, huh? I recall spending hours drawing my own maps, creating mazes on paper, and imagining my very own game as a kid. Can't help but reminisce, I think I even traded in the game once without getting much further than this point. However, I did end up getting it again later, and eventually conquered it as a kid. As we head into Breconary to finally purchase the coveted copper sword, brace yourself, I, Gameplay Sophie, might encounter a few executive functioning issues maneuvering through the shop. Sometimes, my brain and body experience these buffering problems, but hey, that's where AI swoops in to reduce some friction and help me achieve more with the momentum I can muster. The struggles are real, folks, but we find our ways through. Now, with the enemies we're currently facing, the more damage I can deal, the fewer rounds of hurt magic I'll have to endure. Seems the enemy attack patterns are also experiencing a similar issue, only picking the first option. Future Sophie might dive in to fix that little hiccup. Honestly, I didn't anticipate getting the entire game working, but it turned out to be easier to tackle everything in phases. First, set up all the maps with exits, then handle NPCs, followed by getting the shop and item menus in order, and so on. The encounter system was one of the last pieces I got working. By the time I had all the core features operational, it wasn't much more effort to add in the finer details, especially since I found a script compiled by other fans. So, it was mostly assembling the pieces and extensive playtesting. As I'm grinding away, thoughts are scattered, trying to pinpoint the next goal. Small shields just 90 gold, should I go for it? Seems like a reasonable step forward. But then again, gotta remind myself, it won't do much against that pesky hurt magic. Funny how gameplay Sophie isn't exactly pondering over these nuances, that's more the realm of editing Sophie. Meanwhile, ChatGPT is here, translating these scattered thoughts into a cohesive voiceover. Grinding can lead to these random musings, juggling between goals and practicalities. The shield seems like a sensible investment, even if it won't shield against the hurt spell. Ah oh, well, let's go for it. Every step counts in this adventure. Back to the grind spot for some more time-crunched grinding. It's all about gathering that 300 gold to make our way back to Garyham and snag that elusive chain mail. But hey, my brain's feeling a bit like screen static, you know? Happens to the best of us when we're neck deep in grinding sessions. Ah, uh, speaking of technical difficulties, it seems editing Sophie has stopped responding momentarily. The show must go on, though. 
So, I'll take the reins until the reboot's complete. Meanwhile, the cats are attempting to assist with some leftover pasta, apparently, it's the go-to fix for technical glitches around here. Can't argue with their logic, can we? Anyway, let's chat about something relatable, shall we? You ever notice how cats have a habit of helping in the most unconventional ways? I mean, mine think they're master chefs trying to whip up some pasta-based remedies for my tech troubles. Gotta love their effort, right? So, gameplay Sophie did manage to grab that chainmail, kudos to them for the perseverance. But you know, watching the webcam footage of gameplay so feed makes me wonder sometimes. Are they really paying attention to what they're doing? Or are they in their own world, grinding away with minimal awareness? It's an amusing sight, really, and part of the charm of these gaming moments. Speaking of charming moments, there's something oddly mesmerizing about watching someone dive into repetitive tasks with such dedication. You ever find yourself lost in watching gameplay? almost like a calming distraction from the hustle and bustle? It's like a soothing rhythm, watching the clicks and movements while they venture through their quest. A bit like observing a painter at work, lost in their canvas. Anyway, back to the grind. Slow and steady wins the race, they say. Or in this case, slow and steady gets us the gold for the next gear upgrade. It's intriguing how these repetitive tasks can have their own sort of beauty, don't you think? Hey there, folks. ChatGPT here, just checking in on editing Sophie. Wait a second, where's Sophie? Not at the table eating pasta? Oh, I see. Looks like they've taken a detour to doom scroll again. Ah, uh, the perilous journey through endless feeds and posts. Well, let's see if they're ready to get back to the video. Ah, uh, there's the thumbs up. I guess that's a sign we're good to go. Back to the adventure. Ah, uh, I'm back in action, cat in lap, and ready to contribute once again. See? Looks like in the video, we headed to Cole, and I'm supposed to be reading this dialogue, oops. Dreadful is the South Island. Great strength and skill and what only will bring me back from that place. Please, save us from the minions of the Dragon Lord. Hmm, so it looks like the hand axe for 560 gold is what I'm saving up for next. Golem is afraid of the music of the flute, so tis said. Hast thou seen Nestor? I think he may need help. This bath cures rheumatism. Oops. That's a problem for future Sophie. Art thou the descendant of Erdrich? Hast thou any proof? Um, please move. Please, just... Just a little further, okay, thank you. Welcome, we deal in tools. So, here I am, facing the decision of whether to buy the dragon scale for 20 gold. 
It adds a measly two points to my defense, but hey, every little bit helps, right? Do I go for it? I'll take it. Alright, folks, quick dash over to the Northern Shrine. Time to figure out what's needed to get my hands on that rain staff. Sometimes, these little side quests can lead to some fantastic rewards, so it's worth the detour. Hoping it's a straightforward task, fingers crossed for no major hurdles along the way. Let's unravel this quest and see what's in store for us at the Northern Shrine. Thy bravery must be proven. Thus, I propose a test. There is a silver harp that beckons to the creatures of the Dragon Lord. Alright, it seems the path to the silver harp is blocked for now. I'll need those magic keys to unlock doors in Garenham and possibly Garen's grave. Unfortunately, those keys are still a ways off. So, it's back to the familiar grind for gold, paving the way toward affording that hand axe. Time to ramp things up and enter hyperspeed mode. Every coin earned brings me closer to progression, and right now, acquiring that hand axe is crucial for the upcoming challenges. It's a classic RPG grind, persistence and determination pave the way to upgrades and advancements. Let's dive back- Whoa, hold on a sec. It seems like I just met an untimely end in the game and lost a chunk of gold, 48 to be precise. Gaming Sophie clearly zoned out during that grind session. The good news? I've made death less punishing, so it could have been worse. Back to the grind, and hopefully, fewer zoning out moments. Alright, back to the grind once more, revving back up to hyper speed. Feeling confident this time around that things won't end. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like gaming Sophie might be experiencing deja vu, or perhaps, it's just the perils of pre-recorded gameplay. Ah, uh, they've met their fate yet again. Seems like another unexpected turn in the game, despite the pre-recorded assurances. These unforeseen moments keep things exciting, don't they? Well, back to the drawing board and back on the grind. Alright, folks, it's the final stretch of grinding before making our way to Garenham to finally pick up that hand axe. I've got a good feeling about this one, seems like gaming and Sophie's got their bearings back. With a bit more gold in the pocket and a renewed sense of determination, it's off to Garenham for that much anticipated hand axe. You know, sometimes, despite a few mishaps, things tend to fall into place eventually. Feeling reassured this time around that we're on the right track. Let's go grab that hand axe. Hmm, facing the dilemma of whether it's time to venture to the second grinding area. Or perhaps not. You know, sometimes changing plans mid-course can lead to unexpected surprises. So, let's head back to the main grind area for a bit longer before making a final decision. Ah, uh, you know what? Scratch that. Breconary seems like the place to be right now, for reasons. Sometimes, you've just got to follow those gut feelings, right?
Enter where thou can. Within sight of Tantagel Castle, to the south is Charlick, the fortress of the Dragon Lord. Welcome, we deal in tools. What can I do for thee? Yeah, never mind. See Kink Loric when the experience levels are raised. You know, folks, while working on the Space Engineer's setup, encountered a few quirks due to screen size limitations. Can't really catch a glimpse of Charlotte Castle from here, unfortunate as it is. And then there's the NPC interactions, a list of actions, each with its own set of possibilities. For instance, shop NPCs offer, talk, and buy option. Quite interestingly, displaying dialogue tends to exit the actions code, creating a bit of a hiccup in handling multi-page dialogue. Ah, but here's the workaround, NPCs can define yes and no response actions for multiple prompt actions. No. Wait. The workaround is having a talk action and a prompt action. The yes and no responses lets the code do different things based on the answer. This clever mechanism is precisely how the ins work, allowing for different responses based on your choices. And let's not forget about those single item sellers who've got varying prices for the same item. Quite the array of intricacies to consider. Please, save us from the minions of the Dragon Lord. Dreadful is the South Island. Yeah, okay, so I guess the next thing is the half plate for 1000 gold. In legends, it is said that fairies know how to put Golem to sleep. Hmm, here I am in Cole, wandering around, trying to recall why I made this trip in the first place. I don't believe anyone's mentioned the location of the fairy flute yet. Funny how sometimes, in the quest for adventure, I might have ventured here without a clear direction or hint. I mean, do I even remember why I came to Cole? You are mom. Who? Hmm. Was it a tidbit from someone in a village? Or perhaps a vague hint I stumbled upon in my travels? You know, the mysteries of RPG quests can be quite elusive, especially when you're not sure where to start. Sometimes, it's all about that aimless exploration, hoping to stumble upon a clue or a nudge in the right direction. Oh yeah. Wings of the Wyvern so I can return to the castle. So, here I am, trekking back to the castle from Cole, even though I just snagged some wings that supposedly allow me to return without the long walk. You might be wondering, why walk when you've got the wings? Well, the thing is, these wings aren't just for a casual return trip. And, pause for emphasis, okay. See, these wings serve a specific purpose. They're my ticket back from the new grinding area after I've exhausted my magic points. It's all about strategic planning, making sure I've got a safe passage back after utilizing my resources. So, as tempting as it might be to wing my way back now, these beauties are being saved for a more critical return journey. Ah, the joys of strategic item management.
Okay, I don't have enough for anything, but it looks like the large shield for 800 gold might actually be the next target for the gold grind. Well, well, here's a puzzler for you all. Gaming Sophie has unexpectedly reverted to the old grinding spot. Isn't it just fascinating how our own minds sometimes feel like alien territories? It's as if I'm watching this play out from a distance, trying to decipher the prompts and cues for ChatGPT, while wondering who's even steering the ship. And just like that, Gaming Sophie takes an unexpected turn and, oh, a sudden demise in the game. Who's piloting this thing now, one might ask. Ah, the unpredictability of gaming, where the unexpected becomes the norm. Well, onward we go, with a sense of bewilderment and curiosity at the helm. Alright, folks, it's finally time to venture into the new grinding spot. Here, I'll be facing off against a variety of foes, skeletons dropping 30 gold, wraiths bringing in a sweet 60 gold, scorpions providing 16 gold, and if luck's on my side, the prized wolf lords with a solid 80 gold bounty. Now, here's an interesting quirk. Due to a bug in their attack patterns, these wolf lords are particularly generous. They exclusively use the stop spell, which, well, doesn't cause any damage to me. This turns them into a source of free gold and experience points. Talk about turning an enemy's strategy into a gold mine. It's all about seizing the opportunities, even if they come with a few unexpected glitches. Future Sophie may have fixed this in the past, yeah, so if you're playing the save I shared to the Steam Workshop the Wolf Lords may also attack? I think they were basically this way on the NES too. Honestly don't remember if I actually looked into the enemy behavior stuff. Don't think I tested for this enemy at least. Oh well. Continuing on the way to Garenham, I find myself in a contemplative mood, musing over the concept of upgrades and their importance in the grand scheme of the quest. The chatter extends a bit, considering the shield's increased defense and its potential impact on my survival in battles. It's intriguing how a mere shield, an accessory in the game, can have such an impact on the outcome of skirmishes. This philosophical pondering about the role of equipment in the hero's journey leads to a subtle exploration of the town upon arrival, contemplating the significance of these upgrades in the broader narrative of my quest. With each step, the anticipation of acquiring the shield grows, offering not just an increase in defense, but also a sense of empowerment in this thrilling adventure. Alright, folks, we've made it to Garenham. Time to roll up our sleeves and dive into town life. First things first, eyeing up that large shield upgrade. It's not just a small jump from 4 to 10 defense, it's a game changer. This could be the key to surviving some tough battles ahead. Alright, folks, back on the move to the new grinding spot. The next big goal in our sights? That half plate. It's like the shiny beacon of better defense, and boy, do I need it. But hey, as we journey through this game, it's not just me in this adventure. ChatGPT's been right by my side, translating my thoughts into this voiceover magic. Feels like even ChatGPT's starting to feel the fatigue, but hey, teamwork's the name of the game, right? Together, we'll power through this editing process. It's all about that tag team effort. While on the road, a sudden realization hits. Oh, and quick observation. Looks like those wings aren't getting used up when I fly back. Future Sophie's to-do list definitely includes fixing those wings so they don't operate like the return spell. Gotta keep the game mechanics in check. Speaking of fixes, I've got a hunch that future Sophie might have tackled the instock action in cold by now. Ah, the wonders of time and progress. Yay! Ahem. Welcome to the Traveler's Inn. Room and board is 20 gold per night. Also, I ave enough for the half plate, so might as well pick that up while I'm here.
You know, folks, here I am pondering over the fairy flute, trying to recall who's supposed to drop that hint about its location in the game. It's kind of a mystery to me, even though I've got a sneaking suspicion that those of you who've stuck around probably already know where it's at. It's one of those easy to find, yet who gives the hint, scenarios. Ah, the quirks of classic games. While deep in this contemplative mode, lol. Speaking of items, I'm thinking it might be wise to grab some extra wings just in case. You know, future Sophie might just tweak something about them in the future. It's a bit of a time warp situation, I'm editing while being in the video's timeline. Irony at its finest, right? But hey, always better to be prepared in this journey, no matter where in the game's timeline we find ourselves. Alright, folks, check this out. I'm at level 9 now, which means I should have the Radiant spell in my arsenal. It's a game changer. And you know what that means? It's prime time to venture into the mountain cave. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you. There's this nifty little something called the Fighter's Ring waiting for us there. It's said to beef up our attack stats by a couple of points. Now, here's the kicker, back in the NES version, I don't think the Fighter's Ring did squat. But hey, things could be different in this revamped version. Let's go check it out and see if this ring's got some new tricks up its sleeve. Oh, folks, hold up a sec. Something seems a bit off here. I've been wandering through this mountain cave for a hot minute now, and would you look at that, not a single enemy encounter. You know what that means? It's pretty clear that yours truly here might have made a small upsie. Seems like I forgot to add those crucial enemy encounters to the maps of the mountain cave. My bad. Chuckles at the realization. But hey, fear not. Future me assures present me that this little glitch has been swiftly fixed. Yep, no more empty caves in our future adventures, folks. Just a tiny hiccup in the journey. Onward we go, as confident as ever that this mountain cave will soon be teeming with encounters. Alright, folks, as much as I'd love to keep grinding away here, it's about time to start wrapping things up for today. So, a bit more grinding, never hurts, right? But then, it's the moment we all know too well, time to hit that save and quit button. Now, let's see, what's on that end of video checklist again? Save progress, check. Recap the journey, check. Oh, and don't forget to remind everyone to hit that like and subscribe button if they've been enjoying the adventure. Yep, we've got all those YouTube Let's Play protocols to follow, keeping the journey rolling smoothly for everyone.